Today, I'll cover the attack patterns of every single mob on the Ice Caves and Ice Abyss, as well as their nightmare versions, and I'll give you strategies to defeat them all. If you haven't seen the Crypts Guide, you should watch that first, because it'll teach you a lot of foundational skills that will help you PvE in Dark and Darker. The Goblin Caves Guide has a few more skills to learn as well. Feel free to bookmark this video for when you die in the future and want to come back and learn how to deal with that mob. Alright, here are some things that are important to consider when going into the Ice Caves or Ice Abyss. Generally speaking, the mobs and PvE here are harder than on Crypts or Goblin Caves. Mistakes are more punishing, and the enemies synergize together against you even better. A lot of the mobs in the caves have the ability to debuff you with Frostbite if they hit you. Frostbite is a debuff that lowers your action speed and movement speed by 12% per stack, and it stacks up to 3 times. Whether you have one stack or three, you are less effective at dodging and fighting in combat. Alright, let's go over all the mobs. Our first enemy is the Frost Skeleton Archer. Compared to his normal Skeleton Archer variant on the Crypts, this guy is upgraded in every way. His first attack is either a single ranged attack or a double ranged attack, just like the Skeleton Archer. His attacks do apply frostbite. If you are in melee range, he will perform a shove attack, which also applies frostbite, and it has quite a wide hitbox. If you leave his melee range, he will start shooting again. All of his attacks can be sidestepped or circle strafed. The range I'm at now is about his melee range, where he'll do a melee attack instead of shooting. To avoid this, you can sidestep or circle strafe or even backstep, and you also have the option of blocking. Just make sure you aim at his head or upper chest. The Nightmare version gains the ability to do a multi-shot attack. At the end of his combo, he'll shoot a fan of arrows in a wide arc in front of him. You can step in between the arrows, or block them, or duck them with good timing. Just be careful at close range, because you don't want to get shotgunned. The Frost Skeleton Crossbowman thankfully only has one attack. It's a ranged attack that applies Frostbite. Just like the normal Skeleton Crips variant, he has a very long reload which can be punished. For new players, I recommend just sidestepping to dodge this, but you can also block it, matrix it, or duck it, and so on. The Nightmare version gains some on-hit effects. If you get hit, you will be unable to move or attack for one second. That's right, that's a disarm and root for one second, so be careful when fighting other mobs. The Frost Skeleton Footman has two attacks. The first is a Diagonal Slash, which from your view starts at the top right and ends at the bottom left. His second attack is a stab, which has excellent tracking. Both attacks can be dodged if you have enough move speed by aggressively circle strafing to your right. Alternatively, you can dodge his attacks by making enough space between you so that he can't reach you. Managing this distance well is what I call spacing, and I'll cover it very deeply in the PvP guide that's coming up next. But basically, you want to bait his attack, move out of range, punish him, and repeat the cycle. You can have good spacing even with your weapons out as a full plate fighter. The Nightmare version gains the ability to combo attack off of his first diagonal slash. He will do a second diagonal slash from the opposite direction. I would recommend keeping good spacing between you and the mob or blocking it. The Frost Skeleton Guardsman has three attacks. The first is a stab with a short windup. The second is a diagonal slash, which starts from your bottom right and ends at the top left. And the third attack is a long wind-up stab. You can circle strafe, sidestep, block, or space these attacks. Your choice. If you hit his shield, he will counter with a short range shield bash attack. Just make some space between you or block it. If you choose to block a stab attack, make sure you make some distance between him like I'm doing here. If you're at point blank and he stabs you, it might go through the shield. The Nightmare version gains an Electrified Shield, which will return true damage to any attacker that hits it. Additionally, he gains an Overhead Attack, which he can combo into a stab. I recommend keeping good spacing between you to dodge him, or just block his attacks. The Frost Skeleton Halberdier has two attacks. The first is a stab, which is aimed directly at your face. If you have enough move speed, you can side strafe or sidestep it. Additionally, you can crouch duck or matrix this, but I'm only recommending this for good players because you have to be spot on. His second attack is a low sweep attack aimed at your legs. You can easily jump over this, and I'll recommend crouch jumping because it increases your dodge time window. The Nightmare version has nothing special yet, but I just want to remind you to be careful of his stabs. They come out quick, and they're aimed at the face, which means they do quite a bit of damage. 
Upon waking up, the Frost Skeleton Axeman will charge at you with his Felling Axe held high. Although he only has this one overhead attack, if he hits you, he will combo it into another one immediately. You should really try to not let him hit you, because he will just start swinging and DPSing you. If you're fast enough, you can just side strafe away, wait for him to attack, and then punish. The Felling Axe has a long recovery time after missing, and so this is your window to attack. Alternatively, if you time it correctly, you can jump right when he attacks to jump out of the way, and then punish his attack. Here, I'm a full plate fighter with shield and weapon just to show you that with slow move speed, this type of tactic is still viable. The Nightmare version has nothing special yet, but I imagine they'll add something sinister later. Keep in mind, the Nightmare version does 80 damage, and he aims at your head, which has an additional bonus modifier. This means he has a lot of burst damage, so don't pull this guy when you're dealing with others. The Frost Skeleton Mace Man has two attacks. The first is a quick horizontal slash, which comes from your left side. The second attack, he will take a few steps forward to cover ground, and then do a similar horizontal slash. You will also notice he has a massive heater shield, which blocks most attacks that are not aimed. Both attacks can be blocked, or jumped over, or you can just keep good spacing between you. If you choose to jump over his attack, make sure you have a little bit of space, because if you're right next to him, he will still hit you. One thing you'll notice is that if he gets blocked, he will immediately raise his shield and clam up. This makes him hard to hit. However, if you bait his attack and he completely misses, then he'll leave his body and head vulnerable for just a moment. For shield users, once you block the attack, I recommend circle strafing to his sides in order to get better angles around the shield. The Nightmare version has nothing special yet. The Ice Cobalt Axeman has two attacks. The first is a quick overhead chop like this, and the second attack he walks forward and does a flailing diagonal slash. Both attacks have very short range, and you can choose how you want to dodge them. This guy is very easy alone, but becomes annoying in numbers. The Nightmare version gains a Shield Bash attack, which very rarely he'll combo off another one of his attacks. Additionally, if you hit his shield, he will counterattack with a Shield Bash. This attack has a short range and can be easily avoided. The Cobalt Archer has one attack. It's a ranged, single-shot attack. You can easily sidestep and punish this. The Nightmare version gains the ability to fire a triple shot, three arrows in succession. Be careful because often there's no audio cue. He'll just start this ability up. Both Cobalt enemies have an ability known as the Cobalt's Call. Once you get their health low, they'll go into an angry tantrum and start yelling. This should call all the nearby Cobalts in the area to come assist them. However, I just want to make you aware that this is bug. Iron Mace said they fixed it, but it's still an issue. Sometimes, like in this clip, you can see the Cobalt's Call did nothing. The Cobalt behind him is just ignoring his buddy. Furthermore, you need to be careful because you may aggro Cobalt's without it being your fault. Here, my friend and I enter this room for the first time, and we haven't even been killing mobs for the past three minutes. And yet, here are a bunch of kobolds, the two guys on the right, aggroed from the bottom out of nowhere. So, just watch your back until it's fixed. The Frostwalker has two attacks just like the zombie. They're a right hand swipe and a left hand swipe, both with decent tracking. He also has an ability. Once you get his HP low, he will charge up and then put an AoE aura on himself. This aura slows you and quickly stacks up Frostbite onto you. So don't stand in the aura, because you'll take damage, and your action speed and movement speed will be slowed greatly. Just stay at a distance, and this guy is easy. The Nightmare version doesn't appear to have anything yet. The Frost Sentinel is not a trap, it is a living, or maybe unliving, being. He has two attacks. The first is a ranged ability, where he will place an icy circle underneath you. If you get hit, you'll be frostbitten and will take damage. His second attack is a close range AoE burst. Instead of blocking this, you should be dancing in and out of range. Also, having ranged options makes this fight really easy. But let me show you how I do it as a melee character. Again, we're wearing full plate to show you that this is possible on anyone. You're basically dancing in, getting one or two hits, then dancing out, and then repeating the process. The Nightmare version gains the ability to fire three of the icy circles in rapid succession instead of one. These are pretty easy to avoid, just keep walking straight or walking around. The Ice Spider only has one attack, and it's a forward stab attack. You can easily backpedal and attack him. Just be careful because these guys have a habit of exploding when you kill them. If you get hit, you'll be frostbitten and knocked back. There's currently nothing special for the Nightmare version. The Ice Giant Spider has two attacks. The first is a forward stab, much like other spiders. 
and this attack doesn't have much range, so you can easily just distance yourself. His second attack comes after you've damaged him a bit. He will jump backwards to evade, and then follow that up with a lunging stab attack. Just don't walk forward and get baited when he jumps back, and you should be fine with dodging him. As the spider takes damage and evades by jumping backwards, he will also release a cobweb on the ground. This web will remain on the ground for quite a while, so just be careful. The Nightmare version has nothing special yet. The Harpy has two attacks. The first attack is a melee attack where she kicks out with her two front legs. She travels a lot of distance, and so this has a lot of range. To dodge this, you can easily sidestep or circle strafe around her. While you are doing this, you can punish her, but keep in mind, because of the distance that she travels, you need to time your attack correctly to hit her. Alternatively, you can block her attack, which will keep her in place and allow you an easy headshot punish. The Harpy's second attack is an airwave attack, where she shoots two magical airwaves out from her. For the pattern of the airwaves, imagine you see a cleric here and he's fighting the harpy. The airwaves will travel in a pattern like this around him. So to dodge it, you actually don't want to dodge. You just stay where you are and don't sidestep. The airwaves will travel harmlessly around you. Now keep in mind, all of her attacks have a lot of knockback, so you need to be aware of where you fight her and where your back is. Don't fight with your back to the pit like in this clip, it's very dangerous and risky. The Nightmare version gains an air attack, which is basically a combo attack off of the first melee attack. It allows her to attack twice in succession, which may throw off your timing. Otherwise, nothing new here, and you got this. The Frozen Ghost has two attacks. The first is a simple ranged projectile like this which can be easily dodged. For his second attack, he channels his anguish into creating frozen terrain underneath you. This will slow you and start applying stacks of frostbite if you stand in it, so don't do that. The frozen ghost also has an escape ability. Once he's taken a bunch of damage, he will start to try and run away from you while creating a bunch of icy pools on the ground. You can either DPS burst him so that he can't get the ability off, or just make sure he has a place to run that you don't mind being covered in ice. The Nightmare version has nothing special yet. The Frost Imp has one attack, and it's a ranged projectile that does AoE damage when it lands. He fires it in a lobbed arc, which means you can stand at medium range and it'll go directly over your head. Don't try to block these attacks. When his health is low, the Frost Imp will try to retreat by teleporting away. Wherever he goes, you'll be able to hear with an audio cue. This guy is really easy unless you've overpooled the room. The final thing to note is that his ranged projectiles persist in the world for a very long time. If you touch them, you'll be damaged, you'll get frostbite, and you'll be trapped for one second. So don't let him shoot up the entire room and throw these everywhere. The Nightmare version gains a frost wave attack, which emanates directly from him. If you see the particle effects, just make some distance to dodge it. The Frost Wolf actually has a few attacks, but we're going to simplify this. He has a short range bite with decent tracking, and then he has a lunge attack. You can use the same dodging pattern as the Demon Dog by just circle strafing around him. These guys are pretty easy alone, but become more dangerous with groups of mobs. Keep in mind they are pretty quick, and so if you try to run, they might be able to catch you. Be careful blocking the lunge, because the attack will often go through your shield if you're too close. The Nightmare version gains a dash attack, which he can chain off of his other attack. Even in full plate with weapon and shield out, I'm able to sidestep the attacks. So you should be able to as well. The Frost Giant Shielder has two attacks. They're both melee shield bashes. The first comes from the left, and the second looks like it's coming from the left, but it's actually coming from the right. You can block his attacks, but it's hard for a new player, so I'm going to show you two different methods, and you can choose whatever you like. For the first method, you want to watch his attacks, see which way it's coming from, and then go to the opposite side. So here, he attacks from the left, that means we go to the right to dodge. Then we punish, get our hits in, and repeat. He goes to the left, we go right. Now, his right attack is deceptive because he holds the shield on the left and then he actually attacks right, so be careful of this attack, it's very deceptive. Alternatively, if you're very good at spacing, you can consider this method. You basically just dodge out his attacks and then punish at the end. It takes some time to get a feel for the spacing, but once you learn it, it's pretty easy. There's no Nightmare version yet. The Frost Giant Berserker has like five different attacks and they can be chained together into really long combos. Instead of teaching you how to dodge every single attack, I think it's better if I just give you a method to deal with everything together. When you hear his scream, that's his audio cue that he's about to start a combo. You should duck the first potential strike by ducking left and then circle strafing aggressively behind him clockwise. Don't fight him on uneven terrain like this, because it's easier to get hit, and make sure you have plenty of space around you. 
At the end of his combo, he has a window of recovery which you can DPS him. Again, you duck the first strike left, and then you circle strafe clockwise, following him until he stops his combo. Then you punish. This guy is very scary if you don't know how to deal with him, but once you do, he's not that bad. Quick update to the returning veterans, they recently changed his attack patterns, so your old dodging methods might not work anymore. The Nightmare version does not exist yet. The Frost Demon has two attacks. The first is a fan of ranged projectiles. He does a short windup and then throws them in a fan from the left to the right. You'll want to do what I'm doing here, bait to the right and then dodge to the left. By walking to the right there, I'm making him fire to the right, but I still have space on my left with which I can sidestep dodge. For his second attack, he charges up a long time, which is a great point to DPS him, and then he fires a bunch of projectiles from the sky. Just like his first attack, these damage you, slow you, and apply frostbite. He seems to aim the projectiles where you were a few seconds ago, so try to walk somewhere you don't mind them falling. Once you learn his attacks, he's pretty easy, and you can use a pattern like this to dodge him and kill him. It's only been two weeks since the patch, but Iron Mace has already changed his animation once, and I have a feeling they'll make him a little bit harder. Right now, I'm more scared of the Ice Hounds than the Ice Demon, but maybe they'll add something special for the Nightmare version later. Right now, he has nothing yet. The Yeti has amazing speed and knockback, so you need to be careful when dealing with this guy. He only has three attacks. The first is a charge, which he will do if you're far away from him. He usually opens up with this attack. It comes out fast, but you can sidestep it. His second attack is a left hand uppercut. It comes from your bottom right. He will often chain this into a second attack, which is a right hand uppercut. The first attack starts low, and the second attack starts at middle height. So if you want to block the first one, you gotta aim low. If you want to dodge his combo, you can circle strafe right, very close to him, but you need a certain amount of move speed. Not everyone can do this. If you're a fast class with good move speed, this fight is easy, but let me show you what to do if you're wearing plate or if you're slow. The first attack can be dodged by going left, and the second attack can be dodged by going right. So when he combos, you just go left and then right. Please make sure you have enough room to dodge and there's no obstacles in the way. There's currently no Nightmare version of the Yeti yet. The Wendigo has been moved from the caves to the abyss now. Oh, what the he has two attacks. The first is a right diagonal slash and a left diagonal slash combo attack, like this. If you're right in front of him, you can crouch duck or matrix this. His second attack is a charge attack. He'll do a brief audio cue scream and then rush forward at his target. Keep in mind when fighting this guy, his head does not give any additional multiplier to your damage. You shouldn't focus on hitting his head. The glowing heart in the center is his weak spot. This is easier to hit for some classes and harder for others, like Cleric. If you can't reach it, you can hit him in the back at least. The best way to deal with him as a solo is to just bait out his attacks and then punish him in between. He's especially vulnerable after the charge. You have a bit better of a window compared to the combo attack. The Wendigo is very easy with the teammate you can coordinate with. Here, my teammate takes the aggro while I run in and body block and DPS. By the time he switches aggro to me, he's already dead. If you're a class with ranged weapons, you should consider using those because hitting the heart is much easier. Make sure your teammates are careful when he does the charge because the hitbox for the attack actually starts behind him. There's no nightmare version yet. Ah, uh, the Ice Hound. After going into the Ice Abyss HR many times to film this video, this is the enemy that I am most careful when facing. The speed and damage that this thing has is crazy. It's very good at getting through shields. Now, this thing has two combo attacks. The first starts with an overhead right slash and then an uppercut left slash right after. He also moves forward and covers quite a bit of distance with these attacks. The windup is short, so you don't have much time to react. So I recommend keeping good spacing between you and then punish after the combo. His second combo is nasty. It starts with a very, very brief audio cue. He raises both his hands and screams. Then he will combo into a left, right, left combo. Same thing for the other combo. I recommend baiting it out while keeping good spacing, and then you punish at the end. If you're a new player, I recommend either cheesing these guys or avoiding them altogether. Try to clear a different room. Between the damage and the frostbite stacks, if you get hit by even half a combo, you might be in some trouble. If that's not enough for you, then the Nightmare version gains a fourth attack at the end of this last combo. After the left-right-left attacks, he will do a swipe forward with both his paws. 
This attack does the most damage, and it makes his 3 combo now a 4 combo, so be extra careful. Brothers and sisters, this was a lot of work, but I hope it has helped you. If you'd like to help me, please like, comment, or subscribe. All of it helps the algorithm. A lot of you have asked for a PvP guide, so that's probably what I'll work on next. As always, I wish you all the best of luck in the dungeons. Not like this, out.